All right, we're going to get started here in just a minute. I will tie this in, make sure I don't make any mistakes. All right. Well, hey guys, um, welcome to the Bitcoin Cryptocurrency 101. Um, today, what we're going to try to cover is basic blockchain. What is Bitcoin? What is cryptocurrency? I know everybody's probably at different levels. We'll try to get everybody's questions answered, mostly at the end. But if you have something that is pertinent to what we're talking about, we can certainly diverge off onto that a little bit. We'll talk about acquire and hold, and uh, we're going to go into wallets, and we are also going to go into um, just how safe it is. If you leave here taking anything with you, I hope it is to be safe, okay? There's a lot of opportunity in cryptocurrency, but uh, there's also a lot of uh, opportunity for bad guys, too. So let's just kind of try to take away whatever safety... If you're using a lot of safe techniques now, um, or if you're just getting started, always reevaluate that. Okay? Mm -hmm. We only have one right now. We just have to knock. So let's see if I can remember how to do this. <laughs> Wrong. Yeah, the other one has Wrong. a plumbing issue. Oh, okay. Let me show you. Okay. Let's see if I can remember Technical difficulties already here. <laughs> hmm. I did not have this problem before. There we go. Hmm. For some reason, it's not doing slide presentation. Don't know why. Slideshow should just go. It should. Oh, there we go. Okay. I don't know why it's hesitating, but anyway, um, so a little bit about about me. Um, I'm up here in the East Hills. That is Bitcoin chicken right there. That is the real chicken. We have 20 chickens. Those are my little kids right there. They're seven or six and three. And uh, that's my beautiful wife that puts up with me and all of my crazy hobbies. Okay. Let's see if this thing will work. Your name's Shane? No, my name is Shane, and that's yeah. my wife. <laughs> okay. So, I'm the host of a uh, small little YouTube channel. We've got like almost 6,000 visits right now. Um, we have podcasts. There's uh, about two, 3,000 visits to that as well. And there's a lot of interest in cryptocurrency. So, we decided that, you know... A lot of people want to talk to someone in person, so we take the opportunity to go out there and try to help make people a little bit safer. Um, my background is I'm an engineer by trade, um, boilers and chillers really, but a lot of automation. I've gotten involved with software and hardware over the years, so that's always been kind of an interest of mine. And you can see all the stuff on the table there that I'm still tinkering with the computer wizardry. Um, sometimes I'm not such a wizard, but I try. I uh, was able to invest successfully in the dot-com, so I'm kind of cautious. <coughs> I'm not saying I'm a guru or anything like that, but uh, I take a more cautious approach. So if you're looking for someone to tell you you're going to get rich overnight um, and this is the way, uh, I'm not that guy. But, but I think there's a great opportunity in cryptocurrency, okay? And um, I did dabble in cryptocurrency early, uh, late 2010, not early 2010, but very late. I had a few pennies and fractions worth and uh, managed to smoke my computer and lose my wallet and whatever money I had, which wasn't much at the time, but probably would have added up to be a few dollars at this time. So in 2017, my wife and I decided to just get in deeper. We started mining and uh, we started investing more and we started doing the podcast and the, um, the social media in March of 2018. We have a website, it's mountaincrypto.net. It's on your handout if you want to look at it. You're welcome to. There's all kinds of good stuff there. I do want to give my disclaimer. 
Uh, my disclaimer is I'm not a financial advisor. This isn't legal advice, financial advice, tax advice, any of those things. This is just my opinion. Um, do your own research, but um, because in cryptocurrency, some people have lost all their money. Now, I believe mostly because of foolishness, but it is risky and it is speculative, and I feel that there's a great opportunity here. And my personal belief is everyone should have at least 100 bucks in it. So, moving forward. If we're going to talk about cryptocurrency, we really need to talk about money. I hear a lot of people say, well, what is this stuff? It's like monopoly money. You know, Money is really what you think it is. It's, it's a system of trust. In this country, we have fiat. Some of you guys remember when we came off the gold standard, and it, it became you know, total fiat. So if money doesn't have trust, and we don't believe in it, it's not worth anything, right? In, in Venezuela, you have a pile of um, money this big, and the roll of toilet paper next to it is more, worth more. Okay, and that's a fact. That's a fact. Their, their money is so valueless right now because nobody trusts it that they don't count it anymore. They weigh it. That's a fact. Okay. So these things are controlled by centralization, by governments. And, and one other thing that you need to understand about cryptocurrency is it is decentralized. It's not controlled by any one entity. Um, this gentleman right here was asking me about the miner, uh, or, and, and someone else was asking me about the miner too. And they're saying, oh, you run the miner, well, what do you mine? Are you mining data? Well, you're actually, people who are in the mining part of it are supporting the network, that where Bitcoin transactions and cryptocurrency tra transactions take place. And I'm going to try to explain that in such a way that you understand it more fully, okay? So some of the types of money that we have now, um, they're kind of familiar to, to cryptocurrency in a way. you got fiat and credit and credit cards and gift cards and ATM cards, right? You've got um, even more electronic stuff. You have electronic transfers so you can make transfers across the seas. Um, people on the other side of the country, you got Apple Pay, you've got PayPal, and you have what's called um, payment method acceptance. So payment method acceptance is like uh, you want to buy some firewood off of me, but hey, I only take cash. That's what I accept. When I bought that miner right there, that big ASIC miner, I bought it off a company called Bitmain in China. They only take um, Bitcoin cash. That's it. So that's that's a payment a method acceptance. Did you have a question? Uh, yes. But why is it the banks uh, don't support it though? Um, I opened up an account with uh, uh, Coinbase, and uh, so I could transfer my money from Chase uh, account into crypto and. They told me if I got involved with it, that they would close my account. Okay. Well, I would get another bank account um, just for crypto, first off. So I'm not going to answer your question super in-depth. We're going to touch on some of the okay. different angles of that answer. But banks don't benefit from this. Cryptocurrency can put banks at a disadvantage and steal a lot of their customers and a lot of their business. The banks don't want this. So that's why when you look at the political, and I'm not going to take political sides, but when you look at the political scene, you see... If you're into Bitcoin and you're following the news, you will see a, lot, a stream of negative news, a stream of positive news, because it's very political, because it's about control. It's about centralization. When it's centralized, it's controlled. This is decentralized. It's not controlled. The banks, in my humble opinion, have a lot of control, and I'll just leave it at that. But Wall Street sees the money in this, and Wall Street is going forward. And a lot of companies like Fidelity and big investment companies are moving forward in cryptocurrency, and it's coming. It's, it's coming on some level, and it's coming in some way. Who will be the winners in the end is another discussion. But let's go ahead and move on with our topic. Um, in the beginning, in 2008, was the white paper for Bitcoin. A white paper is kind of like its constitution. It's the rules of the coin, what's happening. Sometimes it can get very technical, give you all the technical information. Okay. The Genesis block came out in 2009. That was when the miners were set up. People were usually mining on their own home computers. Some people were building out of little cards and stuff. The geeky guys, kind of like me a little bit, but more geeky. And they were mining Bitcoin, which is developing the network and actually creating the coins. And we'll, we'll talk about how that happens. Okay. So, interesting thing. Here comes Bitcoin. Sat Satoshi Nakanomo is an unknown individual or an unknown group of individuals 
that created Bitcoin and wrote the paper. So there's a little bit of mystery behind this. Where is this guy? Who is he? We know he really exists because he has like uh, thousands and thousands of Bitcoin on a wallet that people will watch. So pretty interesting. So Bitcoin makes a lot of promises. Um, reverse the aging, maybe. Peace in the Middle East. We hear all these great things about Bitcoin, right? It's, it's going to get you rich. You're going to go Lambo. That's a popular phrase in the Bitcoin community. Go Lambo. I'm a hill person. I'm a country guy. For me, a Lambo is a lamb and a bow that I give my kids to play with, right? And I would just digress for a moment to say, if you're here to get rich, then, you know, if you're thinking about cryptocurrency, like, oh, man, everybody's getting rich. I, I don't want to miss out. You know, take a step back and think about what's important, you know, because people who make decisions to get rich usually don't do very well, and they don't go forward. They go backwards when they make steps. So personal development is important. If you know what is important in your life and it has nothing to do with money, you're probably on the right track, right? Everybody agree with that? And you'll probably make wiser decisions, I hope. Cryptocurrency, we're going to finally talk about it in detail so that you understand what it is. It's basically money on software platforms, okay? So what we're going to do is talk about a few things that you're already familiar with so you can understand how the cryptocurrency network or platform works. Here's a few things you're familiar with. Windows, right? You've got to pay for the licensing. You give them some fiat, you have the ability to get a licensing, you can make documents. If you're really slick, you can make spreadsheets, you put data in and it extrapolates figures and numbers and can do all kinds of fancy things for you. Computations, okay? If such and such happens and that happens, then this happens. That's how a spreadsheet works. And once it's set and it's locked, nobody can change it. In the cryptocurrency world, there's something like that called smart contracts, which can get rid of escrow agents, escrow companies, banks, things like that. You won't need them to make transfers. If you want to make a transfer around the world, you won't have to pay the high transaction fees. You won't have to go to the company. That can all take place on a trusted system kind of like a spreadsheet. Dropbox is a software program that stores documents and shares documents. You pay a fee, and if you have like a lot of pictures or something, it can store those there. If you have an office and you need documents, you can pull them up on your cell phone as you need them or wherever you need them. So you're paying for data storage. The last one, Fedwire. You may not be familiar with this, but this is a software that is used to send electronic funds between companies and between you and services. Happens like that, boom electronically. Money is spent. It's sent. So in, in a nutshell, cryptocurrency does the same thing. You get the same features. You have a platform where you can have a ledger, like with Windows, and you can make contracts, smart contracts, where if this happens, then that happens, then this will happen. And if or, that kind of a thing, okay? Like a contract. Dropbox, a Cryptocurrency networks can be a storage for data. They keep track of all the transactions that take place, and they can do even more. And then finally, Fedwire, transferring money. Okay? So cryptocurrency basically replaces the US dollars in these transactions and supplies all those other services as well. A big one that people often talk about is uh, PayPal or Western Union used to send money across the country or make transactions. Um, it can take, to transfer some money to the other side of the world can take three days. It can cost 30 to $40, where with a Bitcoin, I can transfer $1,000 with Bitcoin for um, about $3, and it happens in an hour or less, okay? And some cryptocurrencies are working where they, they do it in a split second. So there's always improvements taking place. So there's a ton of cryptocurrencies. Um, I just checked, and there's over 2,091 of them right now listed on coinmarket.com. Okay? That's where you can track a lot of cryptocurrencies and see what the price is. It's a good site um, to reference. So what is the, the real promises of, um, of cryptocurrency? I mean, who's, who's looking at this? Is it just a few weirdos you know, on their mom's computer in the basement? Not hardly. 
Um, it is being utilized all over the blockchain and cryptocurrencies because the, the whole cryptocurrency blockchain is more than just a blockchain for money. It's a lot more. Um, Bitcoin market cap, September, it, it's a little less right now. It's, it's still over a billion. I think it's about a billion. Actually, it might be about right about the same. It was up a billion, uh, 33 million uh, last week. It jumped to over $4,000 of Bitcoin. Now it's dropped back down. I didn't check it this morning, but it was about 3,600 something last night. Okay. Uh, blockchain funding to date, and to date means September 2018. I haven't checked in a while. $2 billion plus. It's probably, <laughs> probably more like three or four right now. And what is Bitcoin going to do? You know, some people say it's going to hit 50000 in the next year or two. Some people, it's like John McAfee. You've heard of uh, McAfee antivirus. It's on just about every computer that the government owns and um, comes basically with most every PC that you have too for a certain amount of time. He is a very technical wizardry kind of guy and he says it's going to hit 1 million by 2020. It's an interesting study. You can look that up. He has a chart and he explains based off of history how he get, comes up with that number. May or may not happen. I don't know. But I do believe, personally, it's going to go up, and it's going to go up a lot. So you can see Apple using blockchain technology, Facebook, Google, Ford, all these different companies that you might recognize, UPS, FedEx, Walmart. Um, there's just a ton of them, okay? Everybody's getting involved, but nobody's really talking about it, okay? This, this is a time right now, even though it's been 10 years, the 10-year anniversary of Bitcoin, this is a time right now for early adopters, okay? This is like um, the dot-coms before the dot-coms happened, all right? This is a time that we're in. Um, it's a trust machine, all kinds of articles. It can be used for schools. It can be used for security with NATO. Um, all sorts of things are happening. Now, I saw a, uh, I went to a big, um, cryptocurrency conference here in San Diego with a company called XYO. And they had a guy that talked about bone chain. And I'm kind of setting you up for talking about the blockchain. Um, it's a trusted place where all the information is stored. And basically what they would do with this is mark on it. And as they would mark on it, that mark would stay and they would continue to mark down it. And this would stand for trans transactions and trade that was done between different tribes. This was discovered uh, in uh, Uganda, and it's about 6,000 years old. So this whole theory of a trust system is nothing really new. It's been around. Maybe you've heard of a tally stick. Here you would have somebody that uh, was a, usually someone that would supply you in grains and foods or something like that, or even gold, and they would put notches in this stick here, and these two would match up, and the grains of the wood would match. So you, if you traded that for value or something, they could come back and get the grains or whatnot. So this... The system of trust has been around for a while where it takes, to, uh, it takes something like a ledger or something to match up instead of a, a currency or, or whatnot. So what I'm going to do now, this, um, you can look this up yourself. I'm just going to pull it up here on the computer. And um, we're going to look at this step by step together. And hopefully... I don't know why this doesn't want to come up. How do I do that? Do I have to shut this off? There we go. Okay, cool. All right. I think... Hmm, I don't know if that's going to work. Escape. Okay. All right, there we go. Thank you. So... Where is it now? Should be right here. Okay, we'll just blow this up a little bit. Okay, so basically you look at this description right here, and you can see they're putting little blocks together at the top with all the little blocks going into it, and then the edges are sealed together. So basically what you have here is a transaction. You've got these two gentlemen here. They uh, make a transaction. I'll play that again for you. There's money, um, and there's something of value. It's being traded. Once it's traded, it creates a record. This record is put next into oops, the network. Now, the network is made up of all these computers here, these miners that we keep calling them. And what they do is they verify this transaction. 
you said you have this, you said you want it, it happens, they match it up, they say yes, you are you, you are he, um, here's the money, and then when they come to a consensus, a majority of them agree on it, then the transaction can take place, okay? These are nodes out there, all those little blue dots that you see are nodes. A node can be, like that ASIC miner has dozens of nodes in it, or you can just have a single card. It's just a computing unit is a node, that's all a node is, is one little computing unit, okay? Now the next thing that happens is that record is going to be put into a block. Once it's stored in the block, the end is given a hash, which is a cryptographic code. And the reason you need the cryptographic code is that so it will match up to the next block and therefore create the chain, okay? Play that again for you. So there's the record that we talked about. It goes in with a bunch of other records and creates a block. The other records are stored in the block. There's a hash on the one end, and there's a hash on that end. Now the hash that it starts with has to be matching the hash of the last one in the chain. Now what's so great about a hash that makes this blockchain so wonderful? Well, the number's huge, and we're going to go into that. So when you take two numbers that are huge and you put them together, they become one number. Nobody knows what that is, okay? It would take so much computing power, and we'll talk about that too. You cannot just come up with that number and figure out what were the two numbers out of that. If I give you a number, 3,459 trillion, 876 billion, 5,433 million, you know, on and on and on, and I tell you, okay, tell me what the two numbers are. That's your clue. It's going to take a long, long time, and we'll, we'll talk about that. So play this one more time just so you can see it, and there is a link on your outline where you can look at this. Both those hatches, hashes match, boom, they get another block. Now, every time a block is created, every time these miners get together and create a block, they get to work to figure out these hashes, to come up with these hashes. Tremendous amount of computing power. They work, they come up with the hash, the block is completed, they're given a reward in Bitcoin, okay? Now that reward lets out, uh, I think, 2030, then they will have to be um, supplied for transaction fees only to pay for their, the work that they do, okay? At that time, the Bitcoin will be worth so much money that uh, it shouldn't, uh, the transaction fees will be sufficient. All right. So let me see if I can get back to our presentation. Okay. All right. Did that okay? So that's a basic blockchain in a visual way that you, hopefully you can understand how each little transaction makes up these blocks and these blocks make up the blockchain. Now we're going to talk about wallets. Wallets are important because those are when those transactions take place, you have to have a wallet. And the wallet is where you store your electronic currency. Anybody who's been around for a while, maybe they remember this. Don't carry cash. What's in your wallet, right? The cash wasn't safe. You need to take these travel checks. They're safe. So the point is, is what's in your wallet, you want to be safe. And that's what we're going to go into. Storing cryptocurrency, when you buy it on the exchange, you could leave it there. It's not recommended to do that, but you can do that. There's online cloud wallets that are available. You can use those. You can download an application or an app. I think that's a much better choice. You can do cold storage, which is completely offline. If, if all I do is use this computer for cryptocurrency and I turn it off, it's now cold. It's not hooked up to the internet. There are multi-millionaire Bitcoin people that have safe deposit boxes full of laptops that have crypto on them. That's how they store it. It's the way they... They wanted to do it. Um, cold storage is where another company, typically insured, um, Coinbase now offers con custodial services where they hold your currency and they will guarantee that it's safe or they'll, they'll pay you, refund you a certain amount of money or all your money depending on what kind of an agreement you make. And then there's even a paper wallet. You can print out a piece of paper and that would have the information that you would need to get your coins should you want them. So first we're going to look at that list. We're going to look at the exchanges. We've got Coinbase and Coinbase Pro, very trusted, very well known. There's a lot of other ones. There's top currency uh, cryptocurrencies. The only difference is Coinbase takes uh, fiat cash 
and um, will get it from your bank account. And you get like Binance, they don't, they will not take that. You need to have like Bitcoin or Ethereum or one of these other cryptocurrencies transferred to the exchange to buy off of a lot of these. So there's some that will let you make the transaction and some that won't. And we'll talk about that. In a so there's pros and cons to all of these. I would say if you're beginning, stick with Coinbase and Coinbase Pro until you learn more about it, and I'll tell you why eventually. Here's some other companies, Poloniex, uh, Bittrex. All of them have been hacked. They've all been hacked. So I don't recommend leaving your money on there. Um, I've, got, I've got some money on Bittrex right now. I've got, some, I've got a little bit of money on uh, Binance. I think I have a few pennies on Cryptopia. I've used Shape Shift. If you're going to be doing day trading or swing trading, then you know you're going to have to leave it on there, or it's going to be too hard to trade it in time, you know, to trade. But if you're going to be buy and hold, you don't want to keep it on these. Now the good thing is, is that once these are hacked, they improve. They find out what the weakness is, they fix it. They're still in business, and these bigger companies will actually refund people their money in time. They haven't been known to do that. All these. All these ones that are still in business right now came back. There's several in South Korea that were hacked and in China and stuff, and they never came back into business. So be careful. Don't. I wouldn't leave a lot of money on any of these uh, unless you're going to do trading. So here's a wallet. Um, cloud wallet, I don't recommend it. It's just too vulnerable. It's too easy to hack. A mobile wallet can be good. Um, if you lose your phone or your device breaks, Make sure you have done all the proper backups, and we'll talk about that, so that you don't lose your money. Desktop, same thing as the mobile wallets. You can lose, um, if it goes up in smoke, you know, you're going to lose everything that's on it. So you need to make sure you save all the proper information. We'll talk about that so you can retrieve it, should something happen. All wallets um, give private addresses. Um, you have private addresses and public addresses. You never give out your private address. Your public address is the only address you give out. Now, all of this is in the uh, handout, so. Cold storage is your best bet for anything you want to hold long term. Um, this is called a hard wallet. I have one right here. It's a Ledger Nano. It's got a little screen on it. I've got a passcode. Um, I also keep, when you have this code, there's a seed, which is just a, a string of words that actually stand for an encrypted code. And we'll talk about that too. And I can store my coins on this, or several of these. And I can keep them in a safe deposit box or whatever, right? So that's your safest way. And I have a link for that, uh, Ledger Nano. They used to be 100 to $200, but you can buy one now for about 60 bucks, a good one, okay? Basic safety. Okay, this is like the most important part of this presentation. And you're going to go, oh my god, i got to do all this. It, it's not as bad once you get used to it. And you should be doing this anyway. If you do any kind of banking or give any kind of information out, uh, you have a computer or anything like that, you should be doing a lot of this stuff anyway. Two-factor authenticating. So I'm going to share with you what I have on my phone here. It's called the Google Authenticator. And um, it's just an application that you download on your phone. You go to the uh, app store, it's this little gray one right here, and when I click it, it's going to open up, and you're going to see all these little token numbers. You see the blue right now? Mm -hmm. These are for all the different accounts that I have. So if you get the number real quick right now, try to get in my account, hack my password, get in my email, hack my email. Yep. Oh, wait a minute, it's too late. It's changing. It's changing. <coughs> the code has changed to another code. So every few seconds it changes. Get a second party authenticator if you're going to have more than 20 bucks on there or you don't want to get ripped off, okay? Very easy to use. You tie this into your account. They all have a step-by-step. -step. Um, no, you just go to the Google store and, and uh, to your app store on your phone, and, and I would put it on my phone because it's easier to use this. I use my phone kind of as a security, and I don't really buy and sell much crypto coin on this at all. The only thing I use on this is I have a Coinbase, and I just make a quick transaction, and um, I'll show you that eventually too. You can use 
different types. Yeah. In this will tell you that you need a two-party authenticator. Okay. And um, there's a lot of information, and you have a lot of my contact and stuff, and you know, there's a lot of information out there to do it. It's very easy. Just go to the App Store, pick Google uh, Second uh, Authenticator, and it'll pop up. You download that, and then you tie your accounts to it. You go in your accounts, go into setting it, and you need to look it up in the search, and they'll show you step by step how to set that up. That's the first thing you want to do. Don't use public Wi-Fi to do crypto stuff. It's fine to look at Blockfolio, you know, but um, you, know, you don't want to be doing transactions and stuff like that on public Wi-Fi. There's a lot of smart people out there, and they can see when you're on, and they can get in and uh, be very malicious. Um, beware of downloads on your computer or your cell phone. And this goes across the board. You have some kind of update. Your computer says, oh, update your security. Update. Don't do it. I'm telling you, don't do it. Go. If you know, you should know what security programs you have running in your computer and you should be able to go directly to that website and look and see if they have updates there. Don't, if you have an email that says, oh, check your bank account, don't do it. Don't, never go there. Always go to your website. The proper way to go to your website is to bookmark the website that you trust, okay? And we're going to talk about that a little bit too. At the very bottom, I got a thing here, well... Let's just go through these step by step, and I'll go, I'll go back and tell you a little bit more how to bookmark properly. Okay? Use a separate email for your crypto. I highly recommend this. And don't call it Bitcoin Millionaire email. Name it something else. They're easy to get. Just get it. And when your computer tells you, do you want to automatically remember this password or your phone? No. I know it's hard. I know it's hard. Write two copies. Put one copy at home where you can use it and, and keep a little book and put all the copies of your passwords for everything in the bank after you get all this set up for your beginning phases. I know it sounds like a headache, but I want you to be safe, okay? I did it. it it's just worth doing. It's just worth doing. Have a separate email. Don't call it Bitcoin. Don't call it crypto. Don't do the automatic password save on it. Use characters, small caps, large caps. Write it down, okay? You can use your cell phone as a second backup in case you lose it, okay? You can do that. All right, so we got the email. Um, your private keys, never, ever give them. You, some people you'll see, oh, uh, we're doing an air, uh, airdrop. We're going to give away free coins. Just give us your, your address. And you send them the address. Oh, not that one, the other one. <laughs> Don't ever send your private because then they can hack your account. Your public address on your wallet is perfectly okay to give out, okay? And you can make multiple public addresses. Once you create a wallet, you can make as many addresses as you want. So if you want one address to deal with uh, Coinbase, it's here. If you want one to deal with Binance, it's here. If you were going to get an airdrop, you can make that one over here, okay? If you have the um, ability to use one computer um, and just use it for crypto and turn it off, that's great. I happen to have an extra computer. I do my crypto stuff on that. This one, I don't do any crypto at all, okay? Just information is all I have in here. Um, the paper backup. A lot of codes will allow you to do a paper backup. It has a QR code on it. It has your private codes. It has your seed, all of that. So if on my laptop or my phone, I'm doing my crypto, and that's where I'm keeping it, and it goes up in smoke. Now I can just get on another device, I have all that information, I can pull my account back up again. I have all my money right there, okay? You won't lose it. That's, that's your backup. That's your backup. You can also back up the application on a disk or a zip drive if you want to do that way, okay? There's many different ways you can do it. Here's another one. Um, don't tell anyone how much cryptocurrency you have. If you're online a lot and someone says, man, I just bought 20 Bitcoin, don't do that. Never do that. Even the guys that talk about crypto all the time, we never talk about how much money. We may talk about percentages of things that we have because people are always asking us. Um, when you bookmark your website, let's say you go to Binance, okay? You want to make sure it's Binance. Look for HTTP and then S. The S stands for secure, okay? If you have HTTPS, then you know it's their secured site. It's safer. 
That's the site you bookmark on your computer that you're going to use for your cryptocurrency transactions. Okay? All that information is in there. All these steps are in here, the safety stuff. So if you don't understand how to do a particular step, you can do more research or you can get on my website and contact me and I'll try to get back to you. I have a Patreon site too where you can get um, a little better access. Um, beware of mirror sites, phone calls, emails, attachments, any of these things. Just beware. Be safe, guys. Okay? So not to scare you, but just to protect you. There's a paper wallet. You can see there's the QR code. This is for Bitcoin. And if you should ever lose the account, you'll be able to get it back very quickly. You got a new phone. Download the QR reader, which is a square deal right here. Click on that. Boom. The account's just going to come right back up. The password's in. Done. Okay? Nothing lost. It's all right there waiting for you. Okay, a little more on Wallet Basics. We talked about private address and public address. When I want to make a transaction, say this is me, and say this is uh, Coinbase, okay? So I, I can make any kind of transactions I want. If, if this has got Bitcoin in it, then I would just take my address from here, and I would copy-paste it over here, for them to receive, okay? And then over here I would hit send, and then I'm gonna, it's gonna ask me for my second party authentication. After I've logged in, I'm gonna put that in. So the numbers that I showed you turn from red to blue, and then boom, it's gonna happen. It's in there, okay? If they're gonna send money to me, they're gonna do the same thing. Um, you can give, you can produce as many um, public keys as you want, okay? And you can have as many wallets as you want. If you do have a wallet, don't just use the same public key for every transaction that you make. All it's, it asks you if you want to make another one, you just click yes, and boom, there it is on the bottom. Okay? Use separate ones. All right? So now we're going to do an interesting conversation. You're like, okay, how safe is all this? You know, I got this paper wallet, I'm doing all this secure stuff, I see this blockchain and all these data's out there, and how easy is it to break into this and get into one of my wallets? We're going to talk about that, and it's probably going to blow your mind. Imagine each one of these squares is one inch, one inch long, one inch wide, and it represents one wallet address, okay? And it's just, it's long and like a checkerboard, okay? Here's what your address is going to look like at the top. You see 1G, 1W, blah, 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 blah. Here's what it actually represents right here. These numbers, all these numbers down here, okay? Now the odds to find the address of one, uh, one BTC address is two to 160, which is actually 146, the number 146, followed by 46 zeros. It's a big number, it's a big number. Now, that one-inch chessboard that we talked about, if each square is a Bitcoin address, that's how long it is right there, 2 to 80 long. How long is that? Well, if you could travel at the speed of light, get in your spaceship now, travel at the speed of light, it would take you uh, 3,245,772 light years to travel, about 3 billion years to check one column to try to find one address. The bad news is, you probably didn't even find any money in it, okay? So how many computers would it take to do this? If we use all the supercomputers and all the computing data available right now, including the Bitcoin network, it would cost you $7.5 million in electricity to find one of these wallets that probably doesn't even have any money in it. So what are the odds of finding one with money? There's only about it's, this says 5 million, I'd say about 6 million wallets right now for Bitcoin, okay? If you use our chessboard and those columns, and it took us 3 million years to find just one address in, the, in one column with $7.5 million worth of electricity, how long would it take before we get through 100? If we used 100 columns a year, it would take us 2 to the power of 51 years before we found even a fraction of a Bitcoin. I got wallets that have a couple pennies in them. And there's guys out there that got wallets that's got millions of dollars worth in them. Just to find one of those, and most of them don't have that much in them. 
would be 2.5 quadrillion years to find one that has some money in it. Okay, that's a long time. I don't think I don't think we're gonna be around. So I said, beam me up, Scotty. There's no Bitcoin here. Nobody's ever hacked the Bitcoin blockchain. It's very safe. Nobody's hacked it. And these numbers are why. The universe is 13.8 billion years. If you use the full power of all computers, including the Bitcoin network as of April 2018, you did it for all those years since the beginning of time, since the beginning of the universe, you'd find 0. .0006 of the way to finding your first funded Bitcoin wallet. It isn't going to happen. It's basically impossible. Now, when you use all the safety things that I told you about, this holds true. When you don't use them, you become very vulnerable. So just remember that, okay? The blockchain is very safe. You need to be very safe too, okay? All right, now we're going to get into the Coinbase. And I have to fight this thing again, I guess. Hopefully I can get it up a little easier this time. Here, here we go. All right, cool. So um, I have the link in your in your thing if you want to look this up. It's just a, a basic tutorial, and uh, we'll go through it here. You register on Coinbase. You, you know, name, email, choose your password, um, prove you're not a robot. You're going to verify your email, which is going to be your special email, hopefully. Um, you're going to put your phone number in there. I think that's okay. Um, you complete all that information. They're going to ask you to verify your identity, so it's going to be either passport or driver's license. Typically, they want the front, the back, um, and then a lot of these exchanges will ask you to like hold your wallet and a little card that says the name of the exchange and the date, proving that it's you. There you are, the face with the card and everything. Um, they, they call that KYC, know your customer. It's required by a lot of uh, countries around the world not just the United States. So another thing I would tell you about Coinbase is they are SCE licensed. Um, very few other exchanges are. Um, and they are insured up to $250,000 for USD. So you do get a measure of uh, safety oh, yeah. and comfort with them that you, you're not going to find with a lot of other... Um, so they go along basically with banking? They do. They will get along with banking. I have mine linked up to my bank account. Um, why is that? Oh, the screen's the bed, With it being uh, it insured for 250000 as we said, it's similar to a banking account. Shoot, you know what? I thought you guys were seeing all the stuff I'm doing, and you're not. Okay, here we go. I'm sorry. You guys weren't even seeing that stuff. Let's see. Let's go back here. Okay. So this is the handout you're going to get right here. Shows you how to register with your name, your email. You're not a robot. You're going to verify your email. You're going to put your phone number in there. Um, you'll get a code with your phone to verify that's your phone. Um, do all this stuff. And then there's your identity. You get that information in there. And, and then your payment method. Now, if you use a credit card or debit card, it's going to cost you like 3 to 5% to buy Bitcoin. Okay? And when, they're, when the price goes way up and the transaction fees go way up, everybody's hopping, transaction fees get higher. So um, I'm going to show you a method where you can buy Bitcoin for a third of a percent. Um, and, and this is the way I do it. I've been doing it this way for a couple years. So um, you will tie in your bank account to Coinbase. And um, I actually have opened a separate bank account. You can get a credit union or U.S. bank. You put 50 to $200 in there, you get a free account if you want to keep it separate. I do it for record-keeping purposes, okay? This is easier for me. It's all on that page. There's nothing else there. Uh, are you saying that the credit unions are easier to work with than the banks then? Yeah. Uh, you know, you said Chase. I don't know what Chase's deal is. Right. Yeah. yeah, for a Coinbase, that's very unusual. I can understand some of the other exchanges that are, you know, seem to be a little bit more, they use the term shady, and some of them, you know, quite honestly could be. And I, I started, um, I, I filled out an app, online app with Coinbase. I have, so I'm, I'm dealing with them now, and they have an
Yeah, there's some banks that don't don't like cryptocurrency. There's no no doubt about that. So. Do I need to find a union bank? Yeah, I'm on, I use Fidelity, a Fidelity checking account. So it's real easy. That's what I do. You can look at U.S. Bank. I think they'll work as well. There you go. There's another one. SDCCU. Then they're kind of green. Yeah. No, do that. That's my bank. Yeah. Right. And like I said, this this is a fairly reputable. Um, this is the one of the most reputable companies of, of all of them, really. Okay, so when you want to buy, there, basically they show you there. You pick the coin that you want, um, and you can purchase it. Now, what I do to save money, if if you just want to keep it real low level, um, and, and you're not going to invest tens of thousands of dollars, you're just going to put you know a few hundred or thousand dollars. If you feel comfortable leaving it on this, you you know you have the app on your phone. I'll show you mine. So it's just a, a blue C. I hit it. And for some reason, it's not coming up. Hmm. I don't know why. Let's see here. My cell phone. Oh, maybe I need to tell my cell phone on. Okay, there we go. There we go. All right, it'll come on now. Oops. Okay. Oh. Come on, phone. There we go. Okay. So basically, you pull it up, and uh, you know it's got it's got Bitcoin, it's got um, Bitcoin Cash, Ethereum, Ethereum Classic, Litecoin, um, OX, and that's that's about all they have. You can track all the prices with these, and then um, also when you go to your account, these are wallets. So when you hit account tab at the bottom, these are all wallets. So right now you can see I've got. I got twenty dollars worth of Bitcoin in there. Um, I have some referral sites, and when people do a referral through Coinbase, they get uh, if they put a hundred dollars in, they get ten bucks, and then they they drop ten dollars in here. So I've just been leaving it in there for right now. And then what I deposit in there is USD, which is U.S. Cash. They don't charge me anything to do that. Once it's in here, the reason I do this is this is my technique for getting um, Bitcoin at a, a third of a percent, which is the cheapest way. And the safe, the combination of cheapest and safest way that I know to get it. Okay. So the next one that we want to look at is. Now is your PowerPoint on your website? Um, I have a, I have this presentation more or less on there. If you want to watch it again, you can watch it there. And I have a YouTube channel. I have, uh, I don't know, I have like 80 videos there, something like that. Maybe a hundred. I don't know. There's a ton of them. All kinds of subjects under the sun. So feel free to subscribe and uh, comment. I do a Skycoin giveaway uh, about once a week. They're uh, another cryptocurrency that I'm a strong believer in. We'll talk about that a little bit. You have your website on here? Yeah. Yeah. Is that the Mountain Mountaincrypto? Mountaincrypto.net. Yeah. And remember to use HTTPS. Remember? Let's be safe, right? Start practicing that. So if you start practicing all these safety things, after a while it'll become not a headache. It'll oh, be a headache I see at first. What you're saying. Oh, yeah. another one. That's for okay. Um, yeah. Okay. Um, where are you think? And I have some cards up here with uh, information too. If you want those, you feel free. So, oh, that's my website right there. So if you go to the website, I don't want to digress too much here. There's there's the presentation right there. And you can actually click on these links. I've interviewed some uh, cryptocurrency company uh, founders. And uh, i got some affiliate links if you want to get in some, some technique stuff. i got the link for the Ledger Nano and all that good stuff too. And then I'll put the next date for the next time that I do a public uh, presentation, which will be probably uh, maybe Alpine, but I do have some slated way out in Hakumba. They want me to come out there. I'm like, oh, Where? all right. Hakumba? Who's that? Way out. Way out east. Way out. Way out. Way out. I mean, oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Imperial County. Yeah. Oh, okay. I know. Okay. Where County is it at, though? That's what I'm Way up in the building. Okay. So, this company here, Coinbase Pro, is a sister company of Coinbase. Okay. 
So when you, if you sign up for Coinbase first, then you will be able to sign up a little easier for Coinbase Pro. This is actually a real exchange, like if you were exchanging stocks and bonds and stuff like that, but it's for cryptocurrency. They don't have a ton of listings like the other exchanges, but they try to list stuff that they're not going to have to take off tomorrow. They're trying to maintain a level of repu uh, reputation. Okay? Um, they do custodial services. So there's a basic look at the screen that you get when you log on. It's basically the same thing. They have custody, which means they hold coins and they will guarantee them to be there. This is for larger purchases and stuff. Um, so what you would do, when you go into Coinbase, you're going to have wallets that are on here. Every time you have an exchange, whatever coin you have, that goes into a little wallet. So you go to my funds or my wallet or whatever they call it, you click on it, and it'll come down, it'll show you everything you have in there. So if you want to add something, then you will just click deposit. And you click deposit, and then a window is going to come up. And I'll show you this window that comes up right here. That's how you buy it. <coughs> Okay, this is what you use when you send money to one address to another, if you send cryptocurrency. Okay? That's the wallet address. This little thing here, when you want to deposit, you will go to, you will go to, it'll tell you what to pick, and you'll pick USD, which is US currency, and you click deposit. This is going to pop up, and in the corner, it's going to say Coinbase wallet. So this is Coinbase Pro. Coinbase itself is typically where people take their fiat and they turn it into just only a few cryptocurrencies like I showed you on my phone. Bitcoin, Bitcoin Cash, Ethereum, Ethereum Classic, Litecoin, and OX. Those are the basic ones that are on there. That's it. And they take USD, US Cash. So you have a wallet for that. So you merely are, when you get this account, set up, they're going to ask you for your Coinbase account, and the accounts will automatically be tied together at that point. So mesh? Yeah. They're sister companies, yeah. Right? And then you would hit this right here, and then you can hit, like, how much? You'll say, how much USD? You can put max. Like, I got, I think you saw on mine, I have $50 on there. So as soon as that clears, it takes about 7 to 10 days to clear on Coinbase, then I'll be able to get send, and that 50 bucks is going to go into my account on Coinbase Pro. Okay. Now, where the, you said that you could cash in. Cash. Okay. Where, if you're starting out and you just want to put that cash in. You're going to need Coinbase. Okay. So, in other words, you've got to start out with a credit card, debit card first. I wouldn't. Well, how do you put I would start with a bank account. Oh, the bank account. And they can yeah, put, and right. just, you're basically just writing right. a check type of deal? No. So right now, if your bank account to the link your bank account to it. Right. Right. So right now, if I want to add to USD, I got fifty bucks in there. Right. So if I want to add, I just click it right there, and I'll say deposit. It's going to say, how do I want to do it? Wire or bank? And I hit bank. There's my Fidelity account. I put in the amount and I hit deposit. Boom. The money's in there. Okay. It's in there. Okay. Right. okay, but they hold it for a while. They hold it for about seven to ten days. Once the seven to ten days is over, then I can go to the Coinbase Pro. In the meantime, I can open up the Coinbase Pro, get it all set up, all right. get the good password, use the second party authenticator, the little tokens. Okay. It's a pain, but just do it. Then I make a deposit on here. I deposit USD for my Coinbase wallet. So you click this, it'll open up, you hit Put in the amount that you want to put in, boom, the deposit's in there. Now I finally got some money on my Coinbase Pro account. What I can do is just go up to this screen here. And I'll say, this, this is, a, there's always a trading pair. So this is BTC for Ethereum. I would do BTC USD. USD is just US currency, right? If I do a market, you can look, there's market, limit, and stop. The more 
things you want to do, the more it costs you. Okay? If you want to just buy it right now for whatever the price is, that's a market. They're going to do it cheaper on Coinbase Pro. If you say, oh, you know, well, I want to do a limit, um, I don't want to buy it if it drops down to, you know, so much money, then that's when you start using the limits and the stops. And you pay a higher fee. You're going to pay 25 to 3% transaction fee or more, okay? The fee and the transaction fee. So the way I'm telling you, it's 30 cents for $100 worth of Bitcoin. It's the cheapest way I know, the safest way I know to do it, okay? And then you can use that for every transaction. For anything, for that anything you want, you can move it around from there. Or sometimes I will take and buy Bitcoin over here because it's cheaper. I want to buy a coin that's a little bit more obscure on a different exchange. I will go ahead and transfer my Bitcoin or my Ethereum and use it on those exchanges to buy other things. But this is just a one-on-one. So, and you have all the all the steps and links to those different. Uh, they teach you the basics on how to how to do these, okay? And uh, that's about it right there. Yeah, you can see the fees. 0.3%, that's a third of a percent. All right? When are you speaking in uh, Alpine again? Do you uh, I don't have a date with Alpine, but they, they said they were going to call after the first of the year that they were interested in having another presentation down there. Okay. So, uh, do you have a business card? Yeah, yeah, I got some break right here. I mean, this is just, this isn't really a business, it's just a hobby, you know, that I do on my side. I mean, I call it my part-time job, but um, <laughs> I, I do investing and stuff, and I do mining, but... Um, you do what? Mining, run, running the computers for the network and stuff, yeah, I, I mean, well, that's what those are over there. Those are the computers that run the network. Different networks for different cryptocurrencies, okay? So I have a Patreon group. It's it's a dollar a month if you're interested. Uh, just trying to build a local community, a um, little bit more access, and uh, I can put some private videos on there and things like that if you're interested in that. Um, okay. All right. So Coinbase Pro, there it is. An interesting thing about the way the coin price comes to be is you have all these over here are all these people that want to buy and all these over here are people that want to sell. So right now, what kind of market do you think it is? A buyer's market or a seller's market? Seller's. Oh. It's a buyer's market um, well, okay. because um, they're, not, they're, they're not higher. If, if they were right, demanding right. the price and this was lower, then it would be, it would be the seller's market. So it's a, it's a buyer's market right now. And this is what dictates the price. So if, if you're putting in the queue that you want to buy Bitcoin right now, let's say $3,600, and uh, you know, you're waiting, you're waiting, you're waiting, because the order's not getting filled. So you just think, oh man, I got to get it, you know? I'll put it in for 38. And it hits, or I'll put a limit at 38, and it hits at 37, okay? So you get it for 37. The more people that do like you, the more the, more the sellers are, are going to, it's going to be their market. Okay, it's not going to be the buyer's market. It's the buyer's market when prices are low, right? Buy red, sell green. Basic rule of uh, investing: buy low, sell high, right? So that determines the price, and also the amount of volume. The amount of volume. So what they come up with is market capitalization. They take the amount of money within a certain period of time, 24 hours. And then the volume of coins that are going in, and they divide the two, and that's the price of the coin. Simple as that. Market capitalization divided by the, uh, the amount of volume, circulating coins that are actually moving around. Not the total coins created, but the circulating coins that are moving around at the time. Okay? That's kind of a basic on how the price is set. So when people put more money into cryptocurrency and start moving things around a lot, Price starts going up. Starts going up. So right now, a lot of things are happening that indicate that the market's going to go up. Um, ETFs are, are hope to be, you know, approved at some level through the SCE in February, 
This will allow people to trade, you know, cryptocurrencies. Backed is uh, a company that actually is the Dow Jones, essentially. They're very interested in bringing cryptocurrency on and trading that, and that would be a ton of money. Fidelity has uh, hired a team of cryptocurrency people and plans on offering cryptocurrency investment things. Canada just legalized uh, cryptocurrency for 401ks and things of that sort. So this is going to be huge. When people start investing in their... Um, their retirements. There's a trillion dollars out there right now. And, you know, the whole cryptocurrency market right now is only uh, like uh, 100 billion. You know, it's not that high. It's not that high. Apple, I think Apple Computers has a bigger market capitalization than the whole cryptocurrency. They're about the same somewhere in there. So this is really the, you know, the ground floor, as they say. Okay, so a couple coins that I'm really interested in that I just wanted to share with you. Is, is the uh, Skycoin, and not so much that I'm trying. To, I'm not trying to get you to buy this. I don't get anything from them or for this, but to just explain to you why I pick it, okay? So that you, when you go to pick some new coin that you think is up and coming, you've got an idea of how I did it, and you can look at how others do it, and then decide how you want to do it. But um, when it first came out, everybody was investing in what's called ICO, Initial Coin Offerings. And the market went up. You could invest in every single ICO, initial coin marketing, uh, initial coin offering, that is, and you would have made, uh, I think, 1,200%. So you just put the same amount in every single one, 1,200% uh, above that you would have made. That was in 2017. 2018, you do the same thing, you would have lost 51%. Okay, so the... The days of just jumping on anything that comes up because there's a good pitch are over. So you need to be more um, careful with your picks of coins. If you're new, I say stick with the top ones. You know, Maybe there's not as much opportunity for growth, but it's, it's safer. So It's very speculative. You know, It's not like they have price earning indicating margins and things like that. So you look at the team... You look at the project, do you believe in it? Um, a lot of them have a mainnet, which is what runs their platform and runs their coin, and that's a big deal. Very few coins actually have their own mainnet, oh, their own infrastructure. Okay? Um, Skycoin does have that. Also, they are doing what's called uh, Internet 3.0. They, they call it the uh, fiber, uh, fiber. They're going to use antennas. They already have over 9,000 nodes right now probably 10,000 nodes by now. They, incre they created their own programming language, the CX language, which is very impressive. The founder um, of this project, his name is Sin. He is one of the uh, early um, Bitcoin people who were on board and helped Bitcoin with some pretty terminal problems that they had back in the early days. So the guy's really smart. Also on board is one of the major guys that came up with Ethereum. And they wanted a better project. They wanted an ecosystem that would encompass a lot more of a, a sustainability, a desirability. The Skycoins generate coin hours, which are kind of neat. If you've ever heard of like NEO, it generates gas, which is another coin. So it's kind of like getting interest. But you can use the coin to pay for transactions. The thing with Skycoin is the Skycoin hours are going to be used to be able to use this internet. Um, it is going to be a decentralized internet, not a centralized internet, which is a whole other subject. They sell hardware. They have hardware wallets coming out next month. They sell their own miners. So they have business partners in solar and electric uh, generation, power generation, and also the UN has been talking to them about using these as a secure method. It's infinitely scalable. Um, I think it's a great project, and they have real products. They have hardware. They have a network. These are the things you want to look for when you invest in something. Do they have real products or is this just pie in the sky? A lot of these companies are, you know, they call them S coins, right? Have you heard that term? The naughty S word? Coins, right? Okay. I don't cuss on my channel unless I stub my toe really bad. I try, not to, I try to keep it family friendly. That's another thing you'll find when you look at the, the other YouTubers and stuff. A lot of these guys are younger and they've made tons of money and they're super smart. I have a ton of respect for them, but... They got mouths that I can't have around my kids. I can't listen to the stuff around my kids. So I try to be respectful of people and, um, and keep away from that. This company's in San Diego. 
XYO network. They have these location devices. They sold over a million of them so far under a company that they had that was called the uh, Findables, and then they called it the XY Findables. This is a really neat company. Um, these could be used to as stamps even to help locate packages and stuff. FedEx is actually evaluating um, their technology right now. Uh, they're going to be sending a satellite up next year, which is going to interconnect these globally, but they're also connected on the ground. So think of like Uber and stuff like that. If they go between buildings, uh, they were talking about driverless cars. I don't know if you guys know, but this yeah. is going to happen in 2020. And then uh, probably by 2030, there'll be driverless trucks. The world is changing um, very quickly. So um, these would be a, a great backup to... Um, provide more safety for these vehicles in case they were to lose their signal between the triangulation of these satellites that run our GPS systems, global positioning system. So this is a really neat company. It's here local. Um, they do have products, um, partners. Uh, if, if you're interested in something local, you might want to look into that. And um, with that, questions and answers. Any questions? I'll do my best. What's the risk of these things by going down? Are they risky or what is the... I would say it's very risky. I would not invest anything but what I call my mad money. So um, if you yeah, if you have 50 or $100 or, you know, if your situation looks different and you have $1,000 and you're okay with putting it in the slot machine and going like this, I'm just going to be frank with you guys. I think there's a ton of money to be made in this, but there can be a ton of money lost. And... They call it weekends. People get into something. Um, if you're going to hold Bitcoin and you're worried about the price dropping, then you may want to be have it tied on the exchange. You know, even though that's risky, and put a stop loss. I guess like going to the casino, you can most of the time you're going to lose. Most of the time you're going to lose. I think if you look at all the cryptocurrencies, it's kind of like the dot com. What about MySpace? What happened to them? You know, what happened to a lot of these places? But who's there now? Who are the big players, right? This is where we're at right now, is we're, we're guessing who the big players are going to be. It's coming. It's here. It's, everybody's investing in it. You, you're able to get in on the ground floor. But, you know, I would say, you know, they say, a lot of guys say invest in five projects or so if you want to be a little diverse, you know. Put, put 50 here, 100 there, you know, whatever, whatever suits you. Any different wallets? Um, you can use different wallets, yeah. If you're just going to have only 50 or or $100 on there, it's not really worth buying a wallet when wallets are 50 to $100. Yeah. So that's up to you what that looks like. For me, when I had a couple hundred dollars and I said, you know what, I'm going to hold this for a while, I got, a hard, I got a, a hard wallet like I showed you here. Okay? That's how I did it. Um, if you're comfortable with a few hundred dollars just being on the app on your computer... And you don't, you're not going to, you know, you're going to be very, very safe. You're not going to use it for a lot of other stuff. You can do that. You know, it's up to you. Um, I try to be more on the safe side on, yeah. uh, on as many things as I can because it's my money. So and if, you're, if you're just an absolute beginner type of deal and you're... Stay with Coinbase. Just uh, buy so a little bit, put it on Coinbase, just and learn. Just trial and error. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Start out with yeah. a little bit. You know, like the first time Practice. you make a transaction, think of it as an experiment, right? You're learning. Don't send the whole $100. I, I know you're going to pay another transaction fee, but, you know, maybe just send 10 bucks and see what happens. Just kind of experiment with it. Get a comfort level. Go, okay, no I got that. Take notes, what you're doing, you know. Everybody learns differently. I've learned hard way, and that's why I'm trying to show you guys some shortcuts yeah. and... So basically, the there's garbage. no um, limit at minimum that you have to. There's, uh, there might be. I. It depends. It depends on. It depends on. Yeah, it depends on where to where. You know. Right. Okay. But um, like I got ten dollar payments from Coinbase, and I could send that to another wallet, no problem. They, they'd take that. So I know that much. Okay. Did you have a question? No. Yeah. That's it. My takeaway from this a little bit is that one thing you can use this for is to transfer funds between relatively cheaply. You certainly hear on the news of uh, uh, old folks that have been cheated out of their retirement by sending money off through a Bitcoin kiosk, for yeah. instance, and you know, wow. it's gone. Yeah, it's and, gone. And it's history. But then they, the thing that was new for me was this buy, sell, and the 
valuation. I can't still get my head around how they derive what the value of a Bitcoin could be. Okay. I, it, I saw a lot of similarities when you showed that pro slide right. about buying, selling, and the value, but these companies don't own or manufacture or produce. So even though it looks very similar to day trading or even buying stocks, there's no, there's no um, products that I could see coming out of this that would define the value of this, of the Bitcoin to make an informed determination whether it's smart to buy or sell. Yeah, okay, For as far as making can a judgment... I, can, I, can I just add to sure, that? Sure, sure. You know, part of my takeaway is it really doesn't seem fundamentally different than, than just currency trading in general. Yeah. When you're trading money for right, money. Right, if you've ever done Forex, no yeah. Thing. Yes, but you've got countries backing those money and they're either the products, right. the oil industry, whatever they're the doing world. economic, their GDP... Yeah. will help define the difference between the financial difference between this dollar and their dollar. Yeah, right. this. So we, but I don't see that here. So here's, here's the thing. We're in the wild, wild west right now, right? Yeah. And people who have tons of money... What if, if I shift if I they put, don't even know whether it's going to go up or down? They just want it? Well, let's say I'm a, I'm a whale, right? A whale yeah. is somebody who comes with a lot of money. I put a buy order on the book. And yeah. for a million bitcoins, and all of a sudden it creates panic. People are like, oh my god, look at this guy selling all this stuff. So they start selling theirs thinking that he knows something, yeah. and then he pulls out, right? Or he pulls out a lot, yeah. and he loses some of them, but then when the market just drops, and it just, you know, it's like the real estate market. When the market goes down, and everybody starts bailing out, and it just yeah. drops, and it drops, just like the stock market, and it drops, and it drops, well, and it drops. Did Bitcoin just do that uh, about six months it, ago? It does it all the time. Yeah. Like I said, this is the wild, wild west. So you want to catch those dips if you're an investor. Yeah. You're looking for those lows, yeah. and you're looking for confirmation of lows. Now, I don't teach you know, how to read charts and things like that. Um, there's plenty of guys out there that do that. But what I do is real simple. I look, I look for just any kind of low, and I time, I time my buys in. I can show you. No, oh, I can understand you. I can understand you looking at charts and buying high and selling low, or so vice versa. But what, what's the where's the valuation coming from? Well, if the valuation. Okay, back, back to that. You yeah. know you've got kind of jump sin. around. Yeah. So everything is is got to have a value somehow. Yes. And it's valued on what people say it's worth. Remember, I showed you the buys and the sales. Yes. Yeah. So we're making yeah. the price. If, yeah. If I want to buy Bitcoin at a thousand dollars and nobody will sell me Bitcoin. A thousand dollars because they're selling at three thousand six hundred. Yes, it's not worth a thousand dollars. It's worth three thousand six hundred. Yes, it, yeah. If they decide they, they don't want to sell it at three thousand six hundred and they put it to three thousand seven hundred, if people want to buy it, it will. That's what it's worth. If people don't want to buy it, they're going to have to lower their price. The market makes the price. Marketcap.com watches this market. The way the coins are always the way the the numbers can be added up is this market capitalization right here bitcoin has 64 billion 99 million 928,285 the circulating supply is 17 million 478,425 you got a calculator and you divide that into that you're going to come up with this price right here $3,667.37 that's what the price is you divide market capitalization from circulating supply, and that is the price. It so is it really is an abstraction. Mm -hmm. yeah. But this way. price comes from people buying and selling right. it. Right. They're pushing it up and down. Right. Right. But the numbers all correlate. They all jive. It's interesting. It's you and I that are making it worth money or not worth yeah. money. Okay. And the whales are manipulating this, just like they do in the real estate market, just like they do in the banking industry just like they do in the stock market, just like they do in everything, okay? Because when you and I run out of money, we got to sell stuff, okay? We got to sell it, and guess who, when we sell it, guess who's buying it? All those rich people, they still got money in their pocket. They're buying at the bottom. And then we get back on our feet again, and we're ready to buy a house, we're ready to invest, and we're ready to buy a new car. Guess who's selling all the stuff at top dollar? The rich people. And then and when we get it, everybody goes, wow, they did it, and the market's still up. So the next batch of people, the next 20% jump in, and then it goes up more, and then the latecomers 
they pay the highest price, and they, they're the ones that are really lining the pockets of the rich people. And then the rich people, they put, pull back, and the market drops again. It's, it's the same thing. This market will become better as more money gets into it. It'll become more stable as more money comes into it. Remember I told you, you take the whole market capitalization of all cryptocurrencies. Uh, yeah, you did mention that. It ends up here, $120 billion, right? Apple has more market capitalization than that. So we're in the beginning. But they have infrastructure and products. And well, there's a lot of infrastructure and products here. And I'm telling you, when you invest, look for the companies that have the strength. Look for the companies that have either been around a long time. If you're going to go for the, these are the top coins right here. As you go the, down, the, the product is the coin itself. See these top ten yeah, are the ones. <laughs> when you're new, these so are the ones hard to get you want to look at. Is your top yeah. ten okay? Then, you, right. as you do research, you want to research these. Like, um, let's say I want to, I want to do some research on Stellar here. You can go. This is CoinMarketCap.com. I don't think I have this on there. So I go to the site here, it tells me that it's going for uh, 10 cents, almost 11 cents. It's down a little bit. Um, I've got a chart right here. So I can see, this is all history right here. I can see the high right here. It was, uh, in USD, it was 75 cents. So if I believe this coin is going to reach its former highs, which Stellar's a good coin. I, I wouldn't hesitate to invest uh, some money in Stellar as, as, a, as a side bet. And we how much was today's price? It was uh, 12 cents. 12 cents. And so if it reached its former high, I mean, you know, you could, uh, looks like six, seven times. Seven X your money if it goes back. Okay, a lot of us believe in 2019 that could happen. If the ETFs go in, if Fidelity invests, they're going to be putting more money in. When they put more money in, that market capitalization number goes up. When that market capitalization number goes up, the coin price goes up. They only made so many Bitcoin. That's why some people are estimating it will be worth $50,000. it will be worth $100,000. it will be worth a million It'll in 2020. Bitcoin, the number one of the, of the currency. Yeah, when you go back and you look at this, we have the market capitalization every first is the first place winner. Also, when you look at coinmarket.cap, coinmarketcap.com, you can look at the technical data. That's typically the white paper. Um, you can go to their website. And these links are pretty darn reliable. So this would be a good place to go. Get your, do some of your investigations. Bookmark your websites with the company. Get on their social media with the company. This is a good place to start your um, your quest if you're looking for other coins. So uh, we just go back. Bitcoin's number one. See, sixty-four thousand. XRP is number two. So XRP and Ethereum have been swapping places for number two largest market capitalization. Those are. It's a really good source for, for finding out. Okay. Looks like they're on the price graph that of the seven day period that they uh, most of them all had a drop uh, at the one. same time. Yeah. Yeah. Is there a reason? Or what what market? We're we're still in a down it? market. So in a down market, um, at this down. time, coins tend to follow Bitcoin. So if Bitcoin goes down, they go uh, down. Now, so it's not always the same. In fact, there's opportunities when these. Got Some altcoin and Bitcoin, they start to squeeze like this. That's an opportunity to trade against Bitcoin. And some people, that's all they do is they trade against Bitcoin. In and out of altcoins against Bitcoin. And they, they accumulate more Bitcoin, more Bitcoin, more Bitcoin by doing that. So when Bitcoin is low against something and they expect that to rise, they'll go ahead and switch into that altcoin. And then if it rises, then they can sell it again at the top and get more Bitcoin. Okay? That's one trading. There's all kinds of trading. If you... There's something called arbitrage. People pay for services, and they look at all the different exchanges, and if you have the time to sit on your computer and look at these, Bitcoin will be sometimes $100 cheaper over here and $200 more here, and they'll make a trade and pick up 100 bucks real quick, just swapping between the exchanges. I don't have time for it. I do a slow buy and hold over time. I'm sorry. I, I see you leaving, and I want to... 
If I could just interrupt. For sure, a go ahead. Sure. Um, I want to make a pitch to become a friend of the Lakeside Library. I'm a member of the board. Oh, okay. And um, one of the reasons is that the fees that you pay to become a friend help to support programs like this. But also, what's super exciting is that we're getting a new library yeah. in the next two years. Oh, that's it's going great. to be three times the size of this facility. It's going to be on Woodside uh, by the it, on at the intersection of Channel and Woodside. There's a oh. big vacant lot there. Yeah. And it's going to be a state-of-the-art facility, custom-made, energy-neutral, with just, you know, one wonderful...